Shall we begin? But Richard, you still have people out there who say that getting the full cycle is impossible. What's your answer to those folks? Full cycle is just a purely natural process. It happens in every river, in every lake, in every pond, in every natural body of water. It's a natural cycle. All we are doing with an aquarium and a filter is just miniaturizing that process. As long as we understand the process and what's required, we can achieve a full cycle in any situation. As long as the environment is correct, and the fish stock's minimal, or as long as the filtration is correct. They're the two ways to achieve a full cycle. What I can understand is people saying that a full cycle isn't possible under some conditions. And I would say exactly the same. For example, take somebody with a cichlid tank. We've got a filter that's more or less big enough. There's obviously no plants in it, but they've got a big enough filter, the good flow rate. Everything is going to be aerobic if you've got foams, plastic balls, ceramic rings. Pretty much all the surface area on those things I've mentioned is external. It's operating in very oxygen rich environment. So all the water flying over there, it's going to be excellent for aerobic activity. So ammonia and nitrite shouldn't be a problem. But unfortunately there's very little anaerobic activity going on in that setup. So your nitrates are going to be sky high. Water change, water change, water change, water change. Or you use a very porous, good quality filter media in the canister. Allow it to slow the flow down as the water is hitting the media and going down the little tunnels into all the little nooks and crannies. It doesn't, doesn't matter how fast the water is flying over that filter media and how oxygenated it is. By the time that water gets down all the tunnels, all the aerobic activity deoxygenates the water by the time it gets to the bottom into the little cavities deep inside the media anaerobic bacteria forms as long as you've got enough media to support enough anaerobic bacteria your nitrates will actually come down full cycle a very natural process another subject of that natural process i get calls every week from people saying that they want to try the bio home in their particular system you know, they give me a, a list of the, the tanks that they've got, the filtration that they've got. And the first thing I say is, how does the water test? And some people will obviously say that the nitrate's sky high. I help them to work out how much they need for the different situation and so on. They buy the media, they go away happy. Other people will have natural systems, you know, with a low stock, planted, lovely substrate. And when I ask them what the water tests are like, zero 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 and and then i'll just say well why do you want the bio home oh well i've heard it's the best and i won't sell them it i say well, why you don't need it you've achieved a perfect cycle you've done it naturally that is the best way to do it it's certainly the lowest cost way to do it uh, people are confused when i refuse to sell them something or i try and talk them out of a sale but uh, there's no point selling something that people don't need if they've got a perfect cycle they don't need the bio home, they don't need any other sort of media. They've done it. It's spot on. Everything's good. It's all good. I still like to ask them a load of questions about that particular setup, just for my own personal understanding on the subject, but there's no point buying something if you don't need it. Sounds like we're talking about a very natural process here, but yet I've had people comment even under my videos that the full getting the full cycle of reducing nitrates back to zero is impossible in an aquarium and uh, but yet you've explained it in a very uh, straightforward fashion how we're talking really about basic nature here if you create the proper circumstances but yet we still get people who argue this uh this point back and it's forth it's quite amusing actually to see some of the comments that people put on videos that feature the bio home because they've obviously never used it they've never talked to anybody who've used it they just come up with an opinion and that opinion is therefore fact. It's very strange. I would encourage anybody who's interested in any product, you know, filter or any sort of filter media, talk to the people who've used it. Find out if they're having success and if they're not having success. Ask them a few more questions. How much are they using? What's their stock? You know, these are all the sort of questions I ask people when they're struggling to achieve a cycle. Unfortunately, in this day and age, people simply won't talk to each other. 
for the most part obviously you get some people who will research you know they'll, they'll really seek out people who've been using a certain product ask them about it get involved in conversation and then make their own decisions they are few and far between a lot of other people just want somebody else's opinion and that's where a lot of the companies selling expensive filter media capitalize they'll have in-house scientists who they pay to supposedly do tests they'll come up with figures on surface area and how long the media will last and all sorts of things that are just based on pure fantasy the end user has no way of testing those claims and all those figures are just simply copied and pasted and used basically in arguments online and I won't be a part of that. I purely want people to understand a natural process, what is required to achieve a natural process and then hopefully see them achieving that natural process. The figures I hear thrown around sometimes about surface area are astronomical. I mean they're talking about thousands of square miles. How do they come up with these surface area calculations? It's always fascinated me how they do that. Basically take a set size of filter media, crush it under a certain amount of pressure in a hydraulic press, spread out the resulting particles or dust, measure that for the spread. Therefore, if you're making something out of a ceramic dust, like the cheap Chinese media, or the bricks, oops, there's another bit dropped off, that will give a really massive surface area. Very impressive as far as figures on a page goes. However, that doesn't mean that it's a good filter media. It just means that when it's crushed, it spreads out a long way. Those tunnels might go nowhere. They might be too small. They might be too big. The structure itself might break down. Could even have toxins in it. You just don't know. But on paper, surface area is great. Contrast that with a lump of biohome. Because it's made out of sand, when you do a crush, spread it out, it doesn't spread out as far because the particles that the media is manufactured from are bigger. Therefore, the surface area readings on the biohome is way less than the so-called scientifically advanced filter medias available today. But there is an upper limit. You can only go with so much surface area in any given space before the particle size simply becomes too small and the tunnels simply become too narrow to be of any use. So in the end of the day, the perfect media becomes something that is not outrageously expensive, will last a long time, colonizes quickly, made of natural materials so the bacteria doesn't have to build up a slime on it, and also has more or less the optimum surface area per square inch or per litre or per kilo or whatever it is you want to measure it in. That's kind of what we're aiming for with bacteria. We could say instead of, oh god, what was it, 7,200 square feet of surface area per something or other, that it's got 71,000 square feet. Nobody will be able to test that. You know, I guarantee none of the end users will be able to test that. But it wouldn't mean a thing. We would literally just be pulling figures out of thin air. And that's the frustrating thing because companies do just pull figures out of thin air. And that's why in the Pimp My Filter series of videos that I've got on my channel, the all the filters are sized based on how much media they will hold. Because I we know that a certain amount of that media will support a certain amount of stock in a certain amount of water that enables me to do it. I can't do that with any other media because I don't have personal experience. I don't have tens of thousands of people constantly feeding back information on other types of media. People ask me to use other sorts of media in those videos, but I already pay for the media that goes into them, the forms that goes into them, and the shipping back to the people who send me the filters in the first place. If I then pay to buy somebody else's media, I can't give out accurate information on that because I don't know the facts of that media. 
I could be way off and I don't want to be way off. I want to be there or thereabouts. And all of that is from information that's fed back. Again, some people accuse that of being pseudoscience or not scientific. I would say that is the most scientific way you can do it. Contrast that to just making figures up. Unprovable figures. There's, that's not science. It's not science. So all that information being fed back is important. Other companies will be getting that information back. They have to be, but I can't verify that. So therefore, I go with what I can verify and what I'm constantly getting fed back from all over the world. That way, I know that the information I give out is as accurate as it possibly can be. That to me is important. I don't want to just make stuff up demonstrate where so-called science is in direct opposition to nature. That is a biohome brick, again made from the same stuff, very natural. Um, still solid after three months of blasting water against it, nowhere whatsoever. That we say will treat approximately 40 US gallons, which might not sound like much, but that is based on feedback that we have got over the last 10 years from people who've been using the biohome products. We've been listening, we've been tweaking the figures, and I think it was only about five years ago that I actually released guidelines for how much media to use. I, I personally required five years of feedback from thousands of people to make those figures. That's people all over the world, all sorts of water conditions, all sorts of stocking conditions. Those figures, I know, are accurate. I don't believe they are accurate. I know they are accurate. Not perfect, always being tweaked, but about there, pretty much there because of all of that information. Again, some people will call that anecdotal. And that is it's a quite a sad way to look at things, to be honest with you, because all of that information is precious, it's real, it's in real world scenarios. We're not paying people to hand those figures back. They're figures from people who've paid to use the product and taken it upon themselves to either report that they couldn't achieve a full cycle, which I'll mention later, goes on to be rectified, or that they have, and then I ask them, how big's the tank? What's the stocking like? Have you got any other filtration? All that sort of thing. Do you use chemical filtration? What sort of conditioner do you use? It's like the Spanish Inquisition, but I require information. That, very different to that, which costs over twice as much as the biohome brick, but apparently this one will treat 1,000 US gallons, and it has 10 times the surface area, and it'll last for 50 years. That one has been in three months as well, and it started to drop the bits. So that one apparently cost an extreme amount of money to develop. Will last for 50 years, but when you buy it, you get a note in that says, do not move it. Once it's in a sump, don't move it or it may fall apart. As long as you have it in your sump without moving it for 50 years, it's all good. As I said before, I don't believe in playing those games. It's got to be right. The information has to be generated from people who actually use the product, not just made up stuff. It has to be real. It, basically, it has to be real. It really baffles me as to why people want fake information when real information is out there. Here's another example. These are flooding eBay and Amazon. The Chinese media has a gigantic surface area because it's made of a ceramic dust. And it's easily turned back to dust. Total rubbish. If you look at that under a microscope, you'll see that most of those things that look like holes don't actually go anywhere. It's just a weak structured, terrible media. But Scientifically, surface area is massive. It all makes sense, Richard. But you know, there's still going to be detractors. You and I both know that. Uh, being uh, folks who post on social media, I think we both learned you can't be everything to everybody, right? 
won't have pleased the people who think the full cycle is pseudoscience or that it's nonsense or that I'm some sort of boring, baldy English clown with a ridiculous accent. But that's just the way it is. <laughs> At least you've got a sense of humor about it, Richard, and I appreciate that. Richard, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who uh, who tuned in. Comment below. Love to hear your comments, as always. The Convo Gang, comment, rate, share. If you like the content in this channel, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and hit that bell. Always appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in.